All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first uh, round of um, early career talks uh, for this uh, semester. Uh, we will have some more on December 11, but uh, we have a tight program um, with a 20 minute talk. So without further ado, uh, we are very happy to have Wei Hong Su for the first talk, which will be about quantum K Whitney relations for partial flat varieties. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, this is joint work with Leonardo and physicists Wei Gu, Eric Sharp, Hao Zhang, and Hao Zhou. Well, there haven't been that many quantum K theory talks at the seminar lately, so let me start with what is quantum K theory? Well, for a smooth projective variety X, the quantum K theory ring is a deformation of the ordinary K-theory ring, uh, which is additively generated by algebraic vector bundles over X modulo short exact sequences. And now, um, if you have coherent sheaves, such as structure sheaves of sub-varieties, uh, because they have finite resolutions by vector bundles, they also live in the K-theory ring as alternating sums of vector bundles. In this talk, X will be the partial flag variety. And additively, quantum K-theory ring is just the ordinary K-theory ring tensored with this formal power series ring, uh, where the Q1 through QK are quantum parameters as many as the number of steps in our partial flag. In particular, we still have our favorite Schubert basis in quantum K theory, now over this power series ring. The product in quantum K theory is a deformation of the tensor product of vector bundles. They are defined using K theoretic bromo wheaton invariants each such invariant is determined by a couple of K-theory classes, here, uh, where, here I denoted them as sigmas, and an effective degree D, which is an invariant of a curve inside X. In our case, this degree is a tuple, is a K-tuple of non-negative integers, measuring how many times this curve intersects the K. Schubert divisors when they are put in the, uh, when they are put in general positions. And when the sigmas are given by um, structure sheaves of subvarieties in X, this invariant measures the arithmetic genus of the family of degree D curves in X passing through these fixed varieties when they are put in general position. And if there are finitely many such curves, then this invariant uh, is equal to the cohomological Gromov-Witten invariant, which just count the number of curves. And finally, um, because there is uh, because there are group actions over X, it makes sense to consider equivariant vector bundles, and this equivariant refinement can be carried over to quantum K theory. In case you are more familiar with quantum cohomology, I'd like to point out that quantum K theory is more complicated in several ways. First of all, there is no divisor axiom to help us compute K theoretic Gromo Witten invariants. And moreover, um, the structure constants in quantum K theory are no longer a single K theoretic Gromo Witten invariant and they are, they are not enumerative in general. And finally, when you uh, multiply two K-theory classes in quantum K-theory and expand in your K-theory basis, a priori, the coefficients are going to be formal power series in, in Q rather than um, polynomials. But these complications tend to be controllable for G mod P. 
um, it was proved by Anderson, Chen, and Zeng that when you multiply Schubert classes and, um, and expand in quantum K theory, there will, uh, there will only be finitely many Q powers. For, uh, for co-miniscule flag varieties, this was proved by Buch, Capu, Mihauchi, and Perrin, and uh, Cato proved it for complete flag varieties. Even though the structure constants are no longer enumerative, we still expect Schubert structure constants to be positive in the appropriate sense, to have positivity properties. And this was proved for, um, I, I proved this for incidence varieties and for uh, miniscule flag varieties and quadrics, this was proved by Buk, Capu, Mihauchi, and Behan. Uh, and right now I'm working with Benedetti and Behan improving this for this type C analog of incidence varieties. Um, so I've said that there is no divisor axiom in general in quantum K-theory, but we have the following conjecture of Buch and Mihauchia, which can be viewed as a divisor axiom for type A flags. So here, this uh, OXI is the uh, is the K-theory class given by the i the given by the structure sheaf of the i Schubert divisor. Um, and in the case, notice that in the case where the divisor and the uh, and the degree pair to zero, which is the second case, the K-theoretic Gromov-Witten invariant may not necessarily vanish. So this is also a difference from cohomological Gromov-Witten invariance. This conjecture was proved by Buch and Mihauchia for Rasmanians, and I proved it for incidence varieties. Now, uh, we may ask for a presentation for the equivariant quantum K-theory ring by generators and relations. We can, we can use the recipe, um, which was used by uh, Gu, Mihao, Chie, Sharp, and Zhou for Grassmannians. So first we start with a presentation for um, equivariant ordinary K-theory. Then we look at the relations in this presentation and study how they deform in the quantum case. And finally, uh, we use uh, some Nakayama type argument to prove that the deformed ring is a, is a presentation for quantum K-theory. So for us, the presentation for ordinary K-theory that we start with is the Whitney relation, oh, sorry, is the Whitney presentation, which I will describe next. So whenever you have a short exact sequence of vector bundles on X going from E prime to E to E double prime, then the Whitney relations say that the total turn class of E is equal to the product of the total turn classes of E prime and E double prime. This happens in cohomology. Now to get the K-theoretic analog, you just need to replace the total turn class by its K-theoretic analog, which is the um, lambda Y class defined in this way. In particular, the ith turn class of a vector bundle is replaced by the K-theory class of the I wedge of that vector bundle. And here the Y is a formal variable. And these Whitney relations are equivariant. Over our partial flag variety X, there is a nested sequence of tautological vector bundles. And at each step of this flag, we have a short exact sequence of this form, giving rise to these Whitney relations in equivariant cohomology and equivariant K-theory. So um, 
Right. So the Whitney presentation for cohomology has generators, the turn classes of these tautological bundles and their successive quotients, and the relations are given by Whitney relations. Similarly, in K theory, the generators are wedges of the tautological bundles and their successive quotients, and the relations are the K theoretic Whitney relations. So next, we need to study how these Whitney relations deform. For Grassmannians, um, Wheaton gave the answer in quantum cohomology. So the deformation is this last term involving Q. In quantum K theory, um, this was a recent result of Gu, Mi, Haoche, Sharp, and Zhou. So, uh, where you can see that the deformation is slightly more complicated. For general partial flags, we conjecture that the Whitney relations at each step get deformed in a way that is very similar to the Grassmannian case. We can formalize these relations by introducing formal variables for the k-theoretic turn roots of the tautological bundles and their successive quotients. Um, we let S be the, be the algebra generated over the equivariant k-theory of a point by um, elementary symmetric polynomials in these formal variables. And we let, uh, we can write um, IQ for the ideal inside the formal power series ring over S um, generated by the coefficients of Y in these deformed relations written in terms of our formal variables. Then our first result says that um, if the deformed relations hold in quantum K theory, then they form a complete set of relations in the sense that this formal power series ring over S modulo the ideal IQ is isomorphic to the equivariant quantum K theory ring. We also prove um, our conjecture for incidence varieties. Uh, this uses the quantum K divisor axiom that I proved earlier. For the complete flag, flag variety, we also prove that the quantum K, our conjectured quantum K Whitney relations follow from the quantum K divisor axiom. Um, finally, I'd like to say a few words about the physics computation that inspired our conjecture. This is in the case of FL3. So our physics collaborators handed us with this twisted